Dre's ex-wife scores massive divorce settlement. One of Hollywood's messiest divorces also will mark one of the industry's most costly. Dr. Dre and ex-wife Nicole Young reached a massive divorce settlement Tuesday that will see Young walk away from their 24-year marriage with a hundred million dollars. Sources familiar with the settlement tell Rolling Stones that the two sides have finalized the terms of their split with the Death Row Records co-founder forking over more than one-fifth of his fortune and roughly half of his liquid assets. Young will be required to move out of their Malibu Beach house by the end of the month, but will keep a Rolls Royce, Range Rover, Escalade limousine, and a Spider motorcycle, as well as all of her jewelry. The $100 million settlement concludes an 18-month divorce proceeding that played out in the press following Young's filing in June 2020 as Dre's move to enforce a prenuptial agreement signed in 1996. But the powerhouse attorney Samantha Spector fought the validity of the prenup, arguing that Young had signed it under duress. Over the past year and a half, the battle between the 56-year-old rapper and producer whose real name is Andre Romel Young, and Nicole Young, 51, aired plenty of dirty laundry. Nicole claimed in court papers that Dre kicked her out of their home in early April and plotted to secretly transfer their assets to deny Nicole her equal share. She also accused him of multiple instances of domestic abuse, including holding a gun to her head twice and punching her in the head and face all of which he denied. In April, Nicole won her bid to compel three of Dre's alleged mistresses, Jillian Spear, Kelly Anderson, and Chris Rogers to testify in the case. Likewise, Dr. Dre filed a separate lawsuit in September claimed that Nicole stole $353,571.85 from the coffers of a recording studio in Sherman Oaks. Legal observers say the turning point in the case came earlier this year when Spectre successfully pushed for the removal of Laura Wasser and another superstar divorce attorney from Dre's team. Spectre and Wasser had squared off in the past, most notably in the Johnny Depp Amber Heard divorce. Wasser represented Depp while Spectre was on Heard's team. Likewise, Howard King, who had repped the couple on previous legal matters, was barred from representing Dr. Dre in the divorce. As a result, Ann Kiley, whose client include Brad Pitt, took over as a point on the Dre's legal team. With Wasser and King out, Nicole added more firepower to her legal team, bringing in attorneys Lisa Helfin Meyer and Brian Freeman to untangle intellectual property issues, giving the record producers vast library of music created during the couple's union. According to the Tuesday settlement, Wasser and King each agreed to pay Nicole 50000 to put to bed any potential claims between them. Both Dre and Nicole have agreed not to appeal the agreement. A source close to the rapper tells Rolling Stones he is delighted with the settlement. Although Dre is often dubbed the hip-hop world's first billionaire, divorce papers filed in L.A. Superior Court on November 18th placed his net worth at $458.2 million, with $182.7 million of that sum in cash, $6.3 million in stocks, and $269.2 million in property and assets, including intellectual property. His stakes was reportedly worth $800 million at the time, it is unclear what accounts for the discrepancy. You know what? This divorce settlement makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. And I hope there are some women watching this because I want to know what you think. If you're, if you're a female or if you're a woman and you're watching this, please, I beg you, please leave your questions and your comments below. Because I want to get your feedback and I want to know what you think of this divorce settlement. I want to know what you think of this entire situation. Me personally, I think it's stupid. I think it's ridiculous. And I just think it just makes no fucking sense. On the real. When, when you look at, first off, 
Dr. Dre had no business whatsoever getting married. So let me just say that. Let me just start with Dr. Dre first. He had no business getting married. None. None whatsoever. And the reason I say this is because he is a mega superstar. He's a celebrity. So you have to know that when you're a celebrity like this and you get married, you're going to put yourself at risk for judgments like this. And here's the thing. It could have been worse. You, you heard me read the article. He actually had a prenup. And she challenged the prenup. She challenged the prenup saying that she was forced to sign the prenup under duress. And I'm thinking, how in the hell do you sign a prenup under duress? Did he put a gun to your head and you sign it? And then he put a gun to your head again and made you marry him? I mean, that it just don't even make any sense, right? It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And I'm pretty sure that when she signed it, and I don't know for sure. Let me let me take that back. I, you know, I try to make make it known when I'm speaking from facts and when I'm speaking from my own opinion. And this is just my opinion. I believe that when she signed it, she probably had her her attorney look over it before she even signed it. So how in the hell do you sign a prenup under duress? Doesn't make any sense. Makes no sense whatsoever. So when you're a celebrity like this, and you can clearly see that he had other women in his life, and she knew that he had other women, at least that's the way I read the article, she made them testify. You know, I, I, I'll take that back. We, I don't know if she, if she knew that he had other women in, in his life, but you can see that there were three other women in his, in his life, and she made them testify in the case, right? And this is, this is a reason why he shouldn't have never gotten married because I think marriage is beautiful in, in, in the concept, right? Uh, you're getting together and, and you're getting together for better and for worse. The only problem with that is that society has essentially made the marriage obsolete at least modern day society, in my own opinion, has made marriage obsolete. And you're thinking that you're going to marry this person, you're going to be with this person for the rest of your life, but that person could leave or want to leave for, you know, the, the slightest reason. It could just be, uh, you know, uh, the blow of the wind and they can just decide to leave. And when they decide to leave, they're going to drag you through court and try to force you to pay them as much money as they can get out of you. And that's what this was all about. Because when you look at the amount of money that she's getting, she's getting a hundred million dollars. In my own personal opinion, the average everyday Joe Blow can live happily at, off of like maybe, you know, two or three million. Two or three million happily for the rest of their life. She's getting a hundred million fucking dollars. That's a lot of money. Tons of money. And according to this article, it's it's anywhere from one third or 20% of his assets. So what was the point of him getting married? And I don't know if you guys have been following this story. I think I did one article. I did one video on this before. And after I did that video, I heard that he had had aneurysm. So it's like you're taking yourself through all this stress for nothing, right? You could have just told her, look, Nicole, look, I love you. Uh, you're beautiful. You're the love of my life. I hope that we can be together for the rest of our lives. But here's the thing. I don't believe in marriage. If you want to be with me, then you can be with me and I'll take care of you for the rest of your life. I'll put you in the wheel and everything, but I'm not going to marry you, right? And like I said, if you're a celebrity or a superstar, you have to understand that you're going to be a target and people are going to want to be with you just for the bag. They just want to get the bag. They just want to get paid, right? Because they know that when they come into that relationship, they're going to be taken care of up front. 
And then they also know that when they leave that relationship, that they're going to be paid out big time. So this is why I think celebrities should not get married. Women sound off. Let me know what you think. Am I crazy? Am I wrong? Is a hundred million dollars not enough? Right? You know, I've heard women say silly shit like, you know, it's never enough. You know, you you give them your soul, you know, all your money and your soul and 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 uh and your body, and it's still not enough. Right? So this is why you should never get married. Like the average person should never get married because what's happening is that, you know, these celebrity divorces set the stage. They set the standard. Now, now that he's given up one third or 20% of everything he owns, this is now the standard for the average everyday Joe. And the funny thing is the average everyday Joe can afford to give up 20% or a third of all he of all he has he just can't and and that's that's my opinion i think i actually had a debate with another youtuber i forget the guy's name i uh, opinionated so i had had a debate with opinionated and we actually need to uh follow up on that debate because we were talking about something else and then uh the topic of marriage came up we spoke about marriage and he has a different opinion. He has a different opinion on marriage. And I think he said something about, uh, what did he say? Don't quote me, but I think he said, you know, you just want to make the pie so big that you don't mind cutting her off a huge slice of the pie. But, you know, my position is, why are you with me? Are you with me because you like me? Or are you with me because of what I have? And if you're with me because what I have, then I don't need you. That's just the way I feel about it, right? There's no reason for me to marry you. And if you're with me because you like me, then you would understand that I'm very cautious about marriage because I don't want to be in this situation where I have to give up a third or probably 40% of everything I have. Because, you know, let's be honest, they're going to ask for 20% or a third And then if you don't give it up, then you're going to end up paying lawyers and court fees and court costs. And that's probably going to be even uh, above and beyond what they originally asked for. Right. You know, so why are you with me? My thing is, this: if if you're with me because you like me and you love me and you want uh, to be with me for the rest of your life, then that's cool. We don't need to get married. Right. I'll make sure that you're well provided for if I die. And. I, I'll, I'll make sure that, um, you know, if, if I die, I'll make sure you're well provided for. But if you're with me because you're scheming on trying to get as much money out of me as you can, then there's no reason for me to marry somebody like that. You know, I actually did a video on Kev, Kevin Samuels, and I did this video called Why You Probably Shouldn't Listen to Kevin Samuels because he talks about high value men and high value woman, so on and so forth. And he, and I think in that, um, in all of that, he talks about how, you know, men like women who are happy, uh, fit and friendly or something like that. And he, I I think a lot of his show is, is really about, uh, how women can find a mate or something, something along those lines. Don't quote me. You can go and watch his show. He, you know, he's out there on YouTube. But my thing is, I think women don't need coaching. Women do not need any fucking coaching because, in my personal opinion, women are always going to walk away with the bag. They just are. You know, so it doesn't matter if they, they're never going to die alone, first off, you know, because they're always going, and most of the time, 90% of the time, they're always going to walk away with the kids. They're always going to walk away with the kids. So if you have children, you're not dying alone. That, that just doesn't make any sense. It's the men who actually need coaching. And I think my advice for average men out there is that you can't afford, unless you're Dr. Dre and and hell, even Dr. Dre didn't want to give up a third of all he has. uh, Cause he, he damn, he basically had an aneurysm over all this shit. Right. 
So, but unless you're somebody like Dr. Dre, you can't afford to give up a third of all your assets. You can't afford to, you know, run back and forth and have somebody take you to the cleaners. You can't afford that. You know, so the best way to avoid all this stuff is to simply not get married. <laughs> it's, it's just that simple, right? And if you find someone that you truly love, and they truly love you, then they will understand. And there's several ways that you can do planning around the fact that you're not married. Uh, if there's money that you guys want to share or if you want to build together, then yeah, you can build together, right? You can put everything in a trust and you call it, you know, the family trust between, you know, you know, my mate and I or whatever you want to call it. And you start buying assets under that trust. And then if you guys separate, then you split what's in that trust, right? Or you can create a corporation, you know? And I just think that the average person doesn't understand what marriage really is. And I talk about that in the video. Maybe I'll link the video, uh, the Kevin Samuels video that I made at the end of this. But in my personal opinion, all a marriage is, is a contract. It's a contract between a man and a woman and God. That's That's what it's supposed to be. But when the government gets involved, it's really a contract between a man, a woman, and the state, right? So they remove God out of it, and it's man, woman, and a state, and that's all it is. So you have to be cognizant of that when you're going into a marriage, and you have to understand why you're marrying. The average person doesn't understand why they are marrying, at least men. I'll say women, women they understand. They already know why they get married, right? But the average man, in my opinion, doesn't understand why he's actually getting married. The reason uh, you're getting married is because you're creating a contract between yourself, the government, and the woman. And you're basically bringing the government into that contract. If you truly, if, if a woman truly, truly loves you, then she will be willing to marry you without getting a marriage certificate, right? And you got to be careful with this because some states have common law, meaning that if you go to a minister or if you've been living together for a certain period of time, they're going to acknowledge that as a common law marriage and all the same rules apply, right? You know, so some states are like that. But some states, I, th I think several other states basically say that if you don't have the marriage certificate, you aren't married, right? You know, so a lot of this is getting kind of like uh, gray or murky because uh, you have the LGBTQ people coming out and those people could not get married, right? You know, because of other laws. And now they overturn a lot of that stuff. And, and, and now a lot of states basically accept or considers them to be married regardless, right? You know, so... Honestly, just don't, don't do it. Don't get married. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm not saying don't have a soulmate. I'm not saying don't find a person that you want to live with for the rest of your life. I'm not saying any of that. What I'm saying is instead of getting married, maybe get the ring, get the go before minister, right? So long as you're not in the common law state, get the ring, go before minister. Just don't get the marriage certificate. That's what I'm saying right? And have an understanding between you and the person that you're with. And it's, it's simple. Everything that you plan to share, put it in a trust or a corporation. And then if you guys decide to divorce, then you just split up in half everything in that trust and the corporation. You have your own separate bank account. She has her own separate bank accounts. And then you have a joint trust, family trust, or a joint corporation. And if you guys split, you get what's in that. And that way you won't end up like Dr. Dre, giving up half of uh, your assets, right? So that's it for this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. And most importantly, if you're a female and you watch this video, please let me know what you think because I really want to hear uh, a woman's perspective behind all this.